On the agenda tomorrow, let's see, lunch is made, kids on the bus, meetings at 9, 11, and 3, projects and email in between, soccer practice at 5.30, basketball for another kid at 6.30, dinner somewhere in between, and no, I do not know what we're eating, fundraising committee at 7.30, kids tucked in by 9. I am tired before the day even begins. For many of us, life runs at a really hectic pace with little space to breathe in between. And when I find myself living in this type A task-ruled portion of my brain, wondering sometimes, what am I doing this for? I'm gently reminded of one of my all-time favorite scriptures. In Luke chapter 10, we read the story of Mary and Martha. So verses 38 through 42. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all of the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. These five short verses have spoken to my heart in different ways at different times over the years. Sometimes they've reminded me to be present. Other times they've pointed to jealousy and resentment of others. And this year, the nudge said, slow down, focus, pay attention to me. The schedule I spouted off at the beginning is pretty much what most of my days look like, for real. So last year before Lent, I promised myself that I would participate in the Lenten journey with daily reflections and weekly practices. And as the season approached, I was super busy and I had almost talked my way out of going to the special Ash Wednesday prayer for peace at the temple. But at the last minute, I decided to walk across the street and attend. I slipped into a pew back here and took a deep breath as I listened to the choir that was already singing. And to be honest, I don't remember much of what was sung or said because my brain was still mentally slogging through my to-do list that sat on my desk. But then Chris Judd invited everyone to come and take the ashes, marking forehead or back of hand. And there was that slightly awkward pause as people wondered, like, I wonder who's gonna get up first. The first person who responded to her invitation came from behind me, and this slightly unkempt man with a shuffling pace started to work his way up toward the rostrum. He was wearing old jeans and a rumpled t-shirt. He had hard-worn tennis shoes that had seen better days. Uh, he had gray hair and a grizzly full beard, and I'm slightly embarrassed to admit that I made some pretty snappy judgments about him as he walked by. But he reverently approached the table where the ashes were held and waited for Chris to mark his forehead. And then with his hands like clasped at his chest, he gave her a slight nod and a smile as he turned to walk back to his seat. And I remember thinking like all piously that I was really glad that he could come to worship at the temple and that it was open and we were welcoming to everyone. And then, and then he turned my assumptions upside down. As he walked back down the aisle, he stopped by an older woman and her husband who were sitting at the other end of my row. The woman's walker was folded up uh, and propped up against the back of the pew, so it was pretty obvious that she was not very mobile. He bent over, and I could tell that he was gesturing up to the front and kind of asking if she would like to go up. She looked kind of surprised, and then she smiled at him and really slowly rose from her seat. And she took his offered arm, and together they walked very slowly up to the front. In the meantime, other people were coming and going at a much quicker pace, but I found myself riveted to these two as I watched their story unfold. He paused and supported her as she gingerly climbed up the few steps to the rostrum and then stepped back as she walked to the table. And when she was finished, he stepped back in and he tucked her hand in his arm and they made their way back to her seat, talking quietly to each other. And when she was safely seated, 
He bent down again, and he clasped her hand, and he smiled with his heart shining out through his eyes. She gently patted his cheek and smiled back. In that moment, I saw a living, breathing Jesus. And I sat there in my seat, deeply moved for a few minutes as I tried to process what I had just witnessed. I was in a place that I was so busy, I don't know if I would have even thought to ask her if she wanted to go up to the table. What if I had been too busy that day to show up and sit in that pew? What kind of person was this man who asked a stranger if she wanted to go to the table? I would have missed the sacred moment that I can still vividly recall even after almost a year has passed. It reminded me of the mission prayer that I carry in my purse, which apparently I need to read more often. It says, God, where will your spirit lead today? Help me be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me the courage to risk something new and become a blessing of your love and peace. Amen. If we refocus on God, who is the one thing we need, as Jesus reminded Martha, I wonder if we'd be more aware of the needs all around us, even the ones in the same pew as us. So fast forward with me through Lent, during which I was actually pretty good about keeping up my spiritual practice, and join me at Spectacular. So SPEC is the annual gathering of Community of Christ Youth held at Graceland University. And I'm one of the really lucky people who get to be a co-director for this amazing event. And this year, our theme was let go. Let go of image, let go of judgment, let go of limits. And in that space that we create, that allows us to be present, to be love, and to be brave. So Tuesday evening's worship was a powerful experience of music and spoken word. And at the end of worship, the plan was to have these beautiful lanterns released, which were responsibly purchased and 100% eco-friendly, symbolizing our theme that day, which was let go of judgment. So the release of the first lantern from the front was the cue for each delegation to light and release their own two lanterns in small groups. The first lantern lifted off and you could hear and feel the murmur through the crowd. And then there was that slightly awkward pause. Again, I feel like the awkward pause is my issue. But if you've ever tried to light one of these lanterns, it takes a lot of time and patience to let the entire lantern fill up before it's able to float away. So as small groups formed around the lanterns and the chatter kind of started to pick up while they waited for their lanterns to fill, my brain immediately went to, this sacred moment is ruined, and this is not going to be as nearly as cool as we thought it was going to be. And I remember sitting there toward the back of the crowd thinking about all the ways that we could have rigged the logistics to work better, to make this a smoother transition, to make this an important part of the service. And then, and then, my friend Julie tapped me on the shoulder and said, turn around, look at this. And as I turned around, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. In the time that I had been furiously thinking about how things could have gone better, nearly half of the lanterns were already floating gently along the dark night. And I could almost hear a voice gently saying, Jen, Jen, you are worried and distracted by many things. I've got this. But my own voice, which is not always so nice, said in all capital letters, you almost missed this. Stop right now and pay attention. And so I did. And I found when I put down my own agenda of how this thing should have gone and turned my focus back to the source of all, I heard someone in one of the groups close by say, hey, I think we're almost ready. Everybody think about what you're letting go. Ready? Three, two, one. And as that last lantern lifted off, we all stood there marveling at these beautiful, delicate beacons of light that formed a gently bobbing line across the night sky. 
It was a more sacred moment than I could have ever imagined or planned. The past 12 months or so has me reading the scripture of Mary and Martha as a story about two different women with very different strengths, each serving and honoring Jesus in their own unique way, kind of like us. And the truth is, Martha may not have run into any trouble if she hadn't gotten all worked up and forgotten that her expression of discipleship is not everyone's. Jesus never actually tells Martha to stop working. He just points out that she's lost her focus. And there is need of only one thing, continued focus on God regardless of the task. We each have different strengths that God calls us to pull into focus as we live out Christ's mission. So in case you didn't catch it earlier, I pretty much identify with Martha. I am deeply driven to complete tasks and to-do lists, and sometimes in the midst of all of that, I lose sight of the one. I know and deeply admire many Mary-like people in my life, and I have small Mary moments, like the Ash Wednesday Prayer for Peace. But try as I might, I will probably never live in that space entirely. And sometimes I'm frustrated with that pace because I want to move at a different pace. But rather than wish I was more Mary-ish, I'm going to own my strength. And you need to own yours too. Just kind of like soak in it, swim around in it a little, maybe back float or cannonball in it. Just marinate in it. And then notice who else is soaking in it with you. And then, and then, Look over into another pool, because those people over there, they're marinating in their own strength too. And they're serving God in a different way than you. Not better, just different. You can think of it like a giant unity and diversity pool party. So appreciate the way they use their gifts to share the good news of the gospel. Maybe even invite them over for a dip in your pool. Or be brave and accept an invitation to visit someone else's pool. And don't be offended if they don't come back or if they don't stay forever, but welcome them if they do come back. And help each other. Help us keep from getting chained to our to-do list or lost in endless self-reflection. Let us sit at Jesus' feet or bustle around in the kitchen. Help us stay focused on what matters most and the one that we are called to serve. In the course of my reading, I came across this prayer in the Daily Feast devotional. I loved it because it drives at the heart of what this passage is about. It reads, Whether I am more like Mary or more like Martha in the ways that I respond to your presence, let me not be aimless in what I do and in who I am. So, where is God's Spirit leading you today? Whether you're more like Mary or more like Martha, are you awake and ready to respond? Know your strength and then risk something new. Be that muscle who rakes leaves for your neighbor. Be that casserole baked and delivered with love. Be that compassionate ear listening to struggles and heartache. Be that gentle tap on the shoulder with a whispered look. Be that arm of support freely offered with the love of Jesus shining through every pore. But most of all, wherever you find yourself, be that blessing of Christ's love and peace. Amen.